The best thing about working on this project was the collaboration, working with so many like-minded, creative, passionate artists from all of the heads of department to my incredible cast. Another aspect of, of of it that I loved was was just being in this environment. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm from London. <laughs> so <laughs> to be, yeah, I'd never seen nature like that and to really be amongst it, you know, we were, we were properly filming in the sort of marshes. And so, yeah, that was an aspect that I just found so incredible. It was surreal to see a scene on a beach with Kaya and Chase sitting by the campfire and see the, the real moon come up they timed it so the real moon would come up. But then a fake moon would come up because the real moon didn't give enough light. And then, and then the, the waves would come perfectly on the beach because there was a wave machine out there. <laughs> and um, that's the story and, and the movie magic all coming together. And then they open their mouths to speak and my words come out. It's very difficult to describe the emotions it was breathtaking and surreal. I read the book knowing I was auditioning for the part, which was a sort of very um, intense reading experience because I was sort of, you know, really imagining how I would bring that character to life. And so, yeah, to then to then be able to be given that opportunity was was so magical, but also, you know, felt a real sense of responsibility too because I knew how beloved that character was. And actually, my mum had read it. Um, the year before uh, when we were on holiday and was like, this is the most amazing book. And I don't know why she didn't tell me there might have been a character there for, <laughs> <laughs> for me, because I, you know. But anyway, um, it was amazing to see as well how, how Lucy adapted the story to screen. And I'm always interested, because obviously when you're reading a book, the character is so in your mind, and so, it's sort of, so you're so in their mind too. And obviously in a film, um, we're, we're observing them from afar a lot more. So um, it was really exciting to see um, how Lucy sort of did that. And also, like, I loved the voiceover that was woven throughout, that was something I loved uh, about the adaptation, so it was just really exciting. I think I was most excited to get to explore the marsh with Kaya and to see what it looked like. Um, you know, a big part of our prep was going out and getting on boats and finding locations on the water. I mean, we spent weeks boating through different bayous and, um, you know, looking at which background did we like best, you know, these flat like necklaces of, of grass or, you know, the overhanging Spanish moss from the cypress trees. And so I think, you know, when I read Delia's book, I really was excited to get out and explore the landscape that Kaya grew up in and that Kaya learned from and then figure out how to um, show that visually to audiences. Like Livy was saying, I loved all the sort of um, scenes really with Kaya exploring the marsh. I particularly loved all the, the scenes in the boat. We were just filming this most beautiful landscape and I really loved the sort of tutoring along <laughs> on the boat and just really being, you know, in the nature. But I, I also loved the relationship between Tate. I think it takes a really beautiful journey and, and also we sort of plot Kaya growing up a lot through through that relationship. And I always found those scenes really um, moving to, to, to film, but also I love that relationship. So probably those scenes too. I wasn't thinking about it being a movie at that stage, but I did think of the story in a very visual way. And one of my favorite parts is the feather tree. Kaya has been alone all this time and then she finds a feather left for her in the forest. And this was the first sort of communication that she'd had with someone in a language that she could understand. That was the beginning of a very tender and turns out very tough love story. And that was one of the, my favorite parts. I'm gonna jump right in here because <laughs> Reese Witherspoon, she has a very, very successful career, but she just didn't take that and say, you know, look how great this is. She opened her arms and brought in all these women and gave all these opportunities to female authors, directors, actors. She has opened the doors for many um, fellow females in the industry. And I, I, I just think she's one of the top. And, and may I have a second one? Because the second one is Elizabeth Gabler. 
because there are a lot of people that work behind the scenes of a movie. Some people are so visual out there and some people, and some of the people from the studio, from Sony 3000, we never hear their names, we never see them. They don't give Academy Awards to that, that particular category. And yet they play a huge role a huge role and I just admire them so much and I'm so grateful to them and I think they made a big difference in this film and I think they've done a lot for the industry. I mean, I can't really top that because I think that is that too. I wanted to say Reese first because I knew you were. No, I think we were all, we were all gonna go in there, were we? But I would totally agree. And I think Libby too, like we were so lucky that, you know, we were working really with the best of the best on this film in terms of, you know, female filmmakers and also um, just women in this industry. So I, I would say everybody on this crew really. Yeah. It was really inspiring uh, both to work with Reese and Laura Neustadter at Hello Sunshine, who, you know, that, that's part of their mission of their company is to, you know, um, give uh, voice to women's stories, to portray really interesting and complicated female characters, and then, you know, to try to get as many women into roles on, on their um, productions. Um, and they were, you know, supportive from day one. From my first interview, I felt that support coming through. Elizabeth and Erin are executives at 3000. They bring so much passion to the projects that they put together. They are not your typical uh, execs, or I don't know what typical execs are like, but in fact, I was very confused about their title because they bring, you know, such creative juices and vision and, um, you know, are really, really there and supportive um, of artists. And um, so to know that there are studio executives that bring that kind of passion to a book and, you know, stick with it and want to see it turned into a film and we're so passionate about making sure that it got made and I feel like I've, I've had a very lucky run being able to work with all of these incredible powerhouse creative women.